The following podcast is brought to you by the Geeks 2 Network, and all opinions are those of the hosts. Listener discretion is advised. It's time to talk wrestling. This is the Dave Dynasty Show. And welcome to the Dave Dynasty Show. I am your host, Dave Dynasty, joined with Ike Isaacs. Joined by Ike Isaacs. Joined by Ike Isaacs. That would be the correct terminology there. I have to be a little kinder to Ike today because I've been feeling a little under weather for the last couple of weeks. And Ike has covered me on my interviews. Hey. And he's actually done a very fine job. So thank you, Mr. Isaacs. Uh, not a problem. Seeing so you have to change the name to the, Dave, uh, the Ike Isaacs show because, Never. you know, now I'm, now I'm pulling all the hard work here, man, doing right. interviews left and right. 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 So, yeah, last week Isaac did the interview. But Tim Storm did a good job. That was actually a lot of fun. And I was still not feeling well. So he had to cover this week with a very special guest this week. Not that they're all they're all special, but this week was a pretty cool one. As we interviewed Lucha Underground star Marty the Moth Martinez. Very cool interview. Or otherwise known as Martin Casals. Yeah, that's his real name. Yeah, that's his real name. Don't go looking him up on Facebook and stuff. Don't be creepy. So, no. But anyway, so the way that... that the cool interview today so but before we do thank you for joining us and however you did whether it be itunes soundcloud or youtube or perhaps all the above who knows however you do listen to us please go out subscribe follow rate review like and share all that good stuff helps spread the word and a very special thanks to our sponsor luchamaskusa.com for all your lucha libre merchandise Tis the holiday season. <laughs> Tis the season to give Nothing lots says of Christmas wrestling. like a Lucha Libre mask. I, I wonder if, they, if there's like a somewhere there's like a Lucha Libre Christmas cartoon. I bet there is. There probably is. I would venture to guess that somewhere at some point in a Lucha Libre mask, St. Nicholas Partuck. Yeah, I want to say like St. Nicholas fighting for the Christmas joy. Perhaps. I went to see Santa Claus versus the Grinch. Mano y mano. <laughs> that would be a fantastic. With the little dog and all the elves banned from ringside. <laughs> all the reindeer are banned from ringside. My God, he's if, a madman. If WWE could put Colonel Sanders in a ring, why can't we put Santa Claus? Seriously, though, Colonel Sanders versus who was it? Like... The Miz in a chicken costume. Oh my god, that was that was funny. Dolph versus the Miz, weird. I mean, uh, you I, know, uh, I don't put anything past the WWE anymore, really. Honestly, I never have. I grew up watching WWE in the eighties. <laughs> Nothing surprises me anymore. As I man, in the eighties, that would have been really weird. Yeah, when I was a kid, I didn't know any better. I actually, I did know better, and it was called the National Wrestling Alliance and <laughs> Lucha Libre and all that. And I watched all of it. I watched it all. It was all good, but. I didn't like the big goofy guys. I liked the the, the, the the guys that were could really wrestle, but of course they never got any kind of a push. So no, oh, no, no, no. These guys that could like weigh you know three hundred pounds and pop know. walnuts with your biceps. They didn't care about exactly. you. Exactly. So. They didn't bench press five hundred pounds. No. But oh, those well. are also not the guys that you know they're still living vital lives. But anyway, <laughs> let's move on. Let's just jump right to the headlines. Let's go for it. All right. Now, we, we do need to let people know that we are recording this earlier than we usually do because we will be on vacation on our usual time when we record over the weekend. So we had to record early. So this is being taped pre-Survivor Series. will be released post-Survivor Series, and I personally think it's okay because, I don't know, I feel like given our track record, we may have to just devote a whole episode to just recapping the Brock Lesnar Bill Goldberg yeah. match, just because, you know, it's all we've seen to talk about. But. Exactly. So we will not be talking about Survivor Series today, well, because when we're recording, it hadn't happened yet. And let, we were never not time travelers, I can promise you that. Oh, if I was, though. Oh. There would be so much cool stuff I would do. <sighs> like win the lottery, that's one thing I would do. So many matches to go see. All right. I need a beverage. Yeah, so you were drinking. Yes. My drinking water. Yeah. Unlike Mance Warner, who drinks light beers while recording his. See, we should start drinking beer on our podcast. We should. We should. That would be fun. I totally think we record one episode just sauced. <laughs> so I, we'll probably just be we, talking we into even, microphones. We won't even play hit record until we're about 
four beers in. There you go. Hey, I'd be okay with that. And we're going to get some of that heavy stout stuff <laughs> that literally makes your hair stand put, on end. Put some hair on your chest. I, we will do that in a future episode. We have that, that episode, do we have to like interview like the Sandman or something? Yeah, right. Do we enter the Sandman? <laughs> Just to fit with that beer theme. I don't know. We'll, we'll have to have like Mance Warner on here. I always thought we yeah we should do a live interview with Lance Manson. Now that'll be a, that'll be a trip. That would it, no literally be a trip. Like quite literally, I'm pretty sure we would have to like a whole podcast of the wisdom. We had to. And, but, I don't know if I can keep up. I know, right? We'd have to be drinking too because that's the only way you could keep up. That's true. All right, let's Anyways, go for it. Let's enter the headlines. The, uh, headlines. headlines. Yes. Yeah, so All right. First one. Sexy star wins Lucha Underground title. Yeah. This is a. We knew this was coming because this was taped a while back. And if anybody saw the spoilers, they knew it was coming. But it officially aired last last night as we were, were recording this on Thursday. It record, re- aired. She uh, at uh, Ultima Lucha Trace won the Aztec Warfare match to win the Lucha Underground title. And so, yeah, the first female to hold that belt. Um, and it's a cool thing. It's cool that she's held it. It, it, it's you know it's cool that they're 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 giving her that opportunity. Um, I'm not a big sexy star fan. I just I'm not a you know I'm not a fan of her work. I don't think she's great. She's okay, but I did I don't even think she's the top female they have wrestling there. Uh, but anyway, but she is definitely popular. Yeah, definitely. She's very over. So, uh, but you know I, I I know sexy sexy star from being a heel in AAA That's back when she was a heel. Uh, so it's it's kind of odd. I don't know, but anyway, it was a very cool moment. Uh, very cool to see. Uh, Historic. Uh, yeah, I guess. <laughs> I guess. Yeah, I guess it's the word. I mean, but uh, yeah, so it was cool. So uh, that's it's something you asked Marty the Moth about what his yep. opinions were because he would have been there when it actually was taped. So we'll see yeah. what he says. So, uh, so yeah, that happened. It was cool. Um, He's like, it's, it's cool. I mean, and it's, it's all good. yeah. I mean, it's not nothing fantastic. Unfortunately, but I've read spoilers. I know where it all goes. Yeah, and cooler shit happens. So, well, definitely. But hats off to Sexy Star. I'm proud. I don't know why. Not that I know her, but like you said, making history. It, it's just it's a cool moment that they, they that they've allowed you know that e- that equality and the, let it happen and it's good. It's Absolutely, good. it was good TV. So, go ahead. What's the next one? Next headline. ACH leaves Ring of Honor. Yeah. Yeah. They parted ways. And uh, no, no, they claim no bad blood here. It was just a, he's been there over four years or something like that. Just time to move on. Uh, And to me, this means one of two things is about to happen. Either ACH is about to go WWE and which seems kind of ideal for the crew with the cruiserweight thing. I could totally see him there. Yeah, absolutely. Or he'll go to New Japan full time. Yeah. I don't think he would have not resigned if there was not at least something there potentially. Cuz every time you see this happen like Tommaso Ciampa, somebody Michael Elgin, these guys, there's always something else there to entice them. Yeah, absolutely. And uh so I I and I wouldn't I just can't imagine WWE doesn't have him on the radar for the cruiserweight. Because they're getting ready to start the, the 205 live show. You'd think they would be interested. You know, they're obviously going to keep watching for guys. Yeah. ACH is, he's a great talent. Um, so, yeah, I think he'll either show up in WWE or he'll show up in New Japan full time. Absolutely. But, uh, like I said, no hard feelings. Uh, it, he was he was cool to watch here, but, you know, it can't last forever sometimes. you got to move on. you got to grow. Uh, as much as I love Ring of Honor, it's, it's not the top of the – Top of the, the pecking order, so he's got to move on, uh, you know, and, and, and ever on, whatever upward. Hopefully, he does well. Would be cool to see him mix it up with the cruiserweights on WWE. Would be cool to see him yeah. full time new trend. So I, c- I can see either one doing good. So yeah, yeah. Definitely. So what's the third headline? Third headline: Next PWG show announced for December twenty sixth, with a main event of Zack Sabre Jr. versus Marty Scurll. Yeah, is it six twenty six? I don't. Yeah, know it says December twenty six. I think it might have been the sixteenth. Uh, yeah, yeah. Either way, it's in December. Anyway, it's in December. Yes, so cool. Love PWG. Their shows are outstanding. This match will be off the charts. Couple of, couple of Brits mixing it up. Uh, it'll be a good match. It'll be great. PWG always has good shows. Yeah. Uh, fun stuff. Who do you think is gonna win? 
Um, 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 I think they'll keep they'll keep it on, on on Zach for a while. You think so? I don't think. Yeah, I don't think it's quite time yet for. I think Zach's Zach's perfect for them. I don't think he'll lose it, but you never know. PWG, it's, you never know. Yeah. You never know what's going to happen. But I, I don't. I think I think Zach will keep it for now. So I agree. I think I think he's because remember seeing the picture of him like. Uh, when he first won the belt with all the streamers yeah, and stuff. So cool. That was such Great a cool picture. Win. Sorry. So, Random good thought. Deal. Yeah, that'll be a good show. It'll be a good main event. I'm excited. I'm always excited for PWG. Absolutely. It'll be fun. Plus, you'll get the Young Bugs defending the tag titles in there and all that good stuff. Who are they defending the tag titles against? They haven't announced. Oh, okay. Main event's the only thing that's been announced so far. So, I mean, that's enough to draw me in, so it's all I need. It'll be a good show. It'll be a good show. Yeah. It'll be fun. So that's it for headlines. It is, and there's no headlines about Alberto Del Rio. Nope, nothing going on with Alberto, and we're not talking about uh, the two the, the two muscle guys in WWE that are gonna duke it out in Survivor Series. Mm-hmm. We'll talk about that after Survivor Series. We'll talk about that next week. Yeah, don't worry, we will. Maybe that's when we get drunk and talk. <laughs> because it depends. Let's, let's drink lots of beer and talk about Goldberg and Lesnar. Oh, you said their names. Yeah, we already said their names. It's like Beetlejuice. I only said it once. Say it three but times. I think that's what we'll do next week. We will drink beer and talk about that Survivor Series match. That would be nice. Would but right be nice. now, we're going to take a break. Yes. Sir. And when we come back, we have Ike's interview with Marty the Moth Martinez from Lucha Underground. Stick around. Visit LuchaMaskUSA.com for official high-quality Lucha masks and merchandise straight from the Lucha doors themselves. They have a huge and always growing inventory, so check back often. That's LuchaMaskUSA.com. And. Welcome to the Dave Dynasty Show. I am Ike Isaacs, and today I am joined with a incredibly special guest, yeah. Martin Casaus, aka yeah. Marty the Moth Martinez. How are we doing today, my man? I'm doing fantastic as always. How you doing, man? I am doing absolutely fantastic. I am actually wonderful. I'm really excited, ready to get going. <laughs> yeah. Well, awesome. As- awesome. Well, as always, I just want to thank you, first of all, for coming on the show and, you know, giving us an opportunity to get someone who's, you know, seen the wonders of Lucha Underground. This is something we've been really excited about to get to peek into your brain a little bit, you know? Yeah, definitely. Uh, and I'm excited that people are excited about Lucha. It's uh, something that I want to be around for the next 90 years. <laughs> so. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Hopefully, you. I, I want you to be around for that time too, because I definitely want to keep seeing you wrestling, man. Absolutely. Well, well uh, go ahead. I don't know how entertaining that be. <laughs> Absolutely, man. Well, as always, uh, we always start these podcasts off, and we always ask the uh, who we're interviewing. You know, you're a wrestler, so obviously something had to kind of hook you into wanting to do wrestling. So, what was it that really hooked you in and wanted to make you wrestle? Um, I was always athletic. Uh, I did four sports in high school. I'm the only kid who did four sports in high school. And um, I was always interested in the show aspect of wrestling. And uh, I was a big Goldberg fan. And he's better now, but he was always kick butt and leave. Um, But then I saw HBK wrestling, Shawn Michaels. And he just looks like he was having so much fun out there. Um, So... After uh, I started college, um, and I uh, I was looking for something to do athletic-wise, and I always loved wrestling, and I actually went to a WWE Raw event, and somebody handed me a flyer for a local school that I didn't know about. So I, two months later, when I cleaned my room and found it again, um, I went, and the rest is history. And so basically, Shawn Michaels enjoying what he does is what made me get to where I'm at. Absolutely, that's actually really awesome. So then, uh, when you then when you're a kid, you know, you had, what, was he one of your favorites, or did you have other favorites like in Lucha? Or I don't know when you started getting into Lucha. Um, actually, I was a big WCW guy. Okay. Um, I would not watch the WWF at that time. I was a big WCW guy. Um, I loved Goldberg. Um, I loved DDP, and especially when DDP brought someone from the Utah Jazz, which is where I'm from in Utah. Uh, out to wrestle Car Malone. So the match was not good quality whatsoever, but that <laughs> it definitely kept me around watching. Now, one of my Utah guys 
was uh, in the ring, and so I was hooked, and uh, that definitely made me stay. Uh, but I was a big Goldberg and DDP and Sting guy, and then when that shut down, I figured out who Shawn Michaels was, and life changed. Absolutely, absolutely. So then you said you were from Utah, right? Yep. Okay, so you know we're based out of Indiana, so we have our own local indie scene. So you uh, in Utah, did you ever go to like any independent shows? You know, how is the independent scene in Utah? Um, there is the school that I grew up in, and then there's other places run by the guys who couldn't make it to the training in my school. Okay. That sums up Utah. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> yeah, so there's just really my place, and then the guys who didn't make it the training, they went off and started their own companies, and it's a different name every other month, just a different guy running it and throwing money for it. Um, but the school that I am at has been around for 14 years. We're going to have our 15th year anniversary, um, I believe, in March. And uh, that is really the place, only place in Utah to actually do any sort of wrestling or get any sort of training or any sort of school as far as pro wrestling. Um, other than that, I'm, the closest place to me is in Colorado, Vegas. So it's an eight-hour drive, and so I'm very lucky that this school's around when I was interested. Yeah, Absolutely. Uh, so then, if I can ask, uh, what was your what was your school called? I didn't know like uh, if you if that was public or not. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's perfectly fine. No, it's called UCW Zero. Absolutely. Um, and you can go to www.ucwzero.com and find it. If you're in Utah, find a good school, and that's the good school around here. Um, but yeah, it's UCW Zero. Um, uh, Great place where I started. There's still, it's a good place that I, it's a good place that I started, but definitely had to drive a lot more than people in California who have a school every two blocks. Yeah. Um, so I learned how to travel real quick. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'm saying that. You know, that's how it is. Kind of, uh, I think where we are too, because you know, there's obviously a few indie scenes that are good, but then of course there's the handful that are uh, less than desirable. I would say. Uh, on a nicer note. <laughs> on a nicer note, exactly, exactly. But uh, then, absolutely, so then, you know, you started there, and you kind of moved your way up, and uh, as it's my understanding, you know, you were, you tried out for the WWE, too. I did, yeah. Um, obviously, Lucha wasn't around at that time. WWE's always been the mecca, so um, I just, extra work when they were here, um, and then I really wanted it and make it happen. So I started flying myself around to Texas, Colorado, California. Anytime they came near me, I was there um, making sure I was willing to work. Um, and then WWE Tough Enough happened. Um, and then I got a few trouts since then. Um, so, yeah, I definitely had some brush-ins many a times with the WWE. Absolutely. So then how was uh, Tough Enough? Because, I mean, I, you know, that was when I was a little bit younger. So, you know, maybe showing my age just a little bit. Uh, but, you know, Tough Enough. Younger. <laughs> that was 2011, man. That was five years ago. You know, if I'm honest with you, I didn't, you know, wrestling wasn't that big of a big part of my life when I was two, when, back then. So I didn't really get to see oh. Tough Enough. So, I, you know, maybe getting to hear from you how that was would give me a little insight. Yeah, it was, um, my Tough Enough uh, was a little bit different than all the rest. Um, mine was uh, hosted by Stone Cold Steve Austin. Um, I had trainers there uh, called Booker T, uh, Trish Stratus, Bill DeMont. Um, had some awesome trainers. Um, we worked a little bit different style than the other ones. Yeah. Um, and uh, it definitely kept it interesting. Um, but the goal of it and the name of the show was called Tough Enough, so they... Made you do a lot of work before you even stepped in the ring. Um, just want to make sure you're tired and look like crap on TV. So, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> you, you know that's that's it. Kind of brings a whole new meaning to the. You know, you gain ten pounds when the camera's on you, right? Oh yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so then you uh, you had to leave the competition though, didn't you? I did. I had a freak accident where my ankle broke, and I had to get two metal pins put in it, and that's my souvenir from WWE Tough Enough. I got you. So then, then how was that today? Uh, were they pretty okay with that? Were they like, you know, I don't know how that you know affected them, how that affected you? Um, it's a competition show, show so um, 
I wanted to stay. In fact, I broke my ankle. I did about three more drills or so um, that wasn't shown on TV. I did about three more drills, and they knew something was wrong because I couldn't put any weight on my ankle. Um, and I only I had to get sat down by Bill DeMont, and I told him what was going on, and I said, you will not send me to the hospital without you promising me that if something's wrong, I can come back and tape, this, tape it up and come right back. It's like, yeah, just go to the hospital for me. Well, uh, they lied. And uh, <laughs> I went to the hospital, spent all night there, um, had about five second referrals from doctors to try and just get one doctor that would wrap it up or shoot it up with something or just say, hey, you're good to go for a couple more weeks. Uh, but none of them would. Uh, so, uh, the next day I had to go give up my belt to Steve Austin and then I was done. They're perfectly fine with it. It was, a, it was great for TV. Uh, honestly, the WWE, uh, sent me out like a hero and, uh, I'm very grateful for that. And, uh, but it definitely sucks not getting the task of what I was going there for. Yeah, absolutely. And I can, I can, you know, that's obviously, <coughs> pardon me, but that's obviously, you know, kind of a. That can be seen as a, a downtrod for that part of your career, but obviously you've picked it up 180. percent You know, you <laughs> yeah. I mean, you've, you're wrestling in Lucha Underground right, right now. So, how did you get, make it to that point? From you know, after breaking your ankle and tough enough, how did you make it to the point where you're wrestling in probably, in my opinion, one of the best promotions there is? Honestly, I love this place. Um, as long as Lucha Underground has doors open. I will be waving the Lucha Underground flag. Um, so, in, in my head, everything happens for a reason. I was not meant to uh, win WWE Tough Enough. So, I have no idea where my career would have been if I did. Um, but uh, I guess I was not meant to. And uh, now I see why. Um, how it came about was they... Actually, the executive producer was the same one from WWE Tough Enough that works on Lucha Underground. So, he remembered me... Um, and he approached me about a year before Lucha even started, saying, hey, we're thinking about doing this Lucha Libre style in America, and I uh, wonder if you're interested. That's pretty much all I know about it right now, but I want to see your interest. I'm like, I'm in. So uh, I kept up with him for the next year, and then Lucha Underground started, and uh, they had no idea what to do with me. They just knew they wanted me on the roster, um, and that I was entertaining, and so uh, it worked out quite well for me, I believe. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think it worked out well for you. That's obviously from the spectator side, but... <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 honestly, if the WWE came knocking on my door right now, my options are always open. Um, but again, as long as Lucha Underground has doors open, I'm going to wave that flag. Absolutely. So, awesome. uh, it, yeah, Lucha Underground, I, I would love to be seen by more people. It's It's... It's a good and a bad thing because on the El Rey network, which Lucha Underground is being shown on every Wednesday, um, is a great network. We can get um, a lot away with a lot of stuff, but not everybody has the El Rey network. So uh, that's a good and a bad thing. But, yeah, like I said, as long as Lucha has their doors open, I'm going to be there and uh, creeping people out as much as I can. Absolutely. No, I agree. I hope you do because, Obviously, like I said, Lucha Underground is probably one of my favorite and what I think is probably the best uh, promotion right now because, like you said, they, you know, they're not afraid to do certain things, st step over a couple lines if they need to. <laughs> yeah, we stepped over a few lines that uh, most cable companies wouldn't let us do. Exactly. So then also, you know, other than wrestling for Lucha Underground and doing your uh, stint and uh, tough enough, you also wrestle for AAA as well. Yep, yep, I'm going there this time. Ooh, can I say that? No, I'm probably already did. Yep, I've been wrestling in AAA for a little bit, so. <laughs> <laughs> so then you uh, so you wrestled at uh, Triple Mania, correct? Yes, I did. And uh, how was that? How was that? Any, any cool stories about that? <laughs> um, yeah, it was very, that was very interesting because uh, Lucha Underground isn't shown in Mexico which very much surprises me, um, but it's not shown there. Uh, so we went out there, and they had no idea who we were. So we walk out, and they were just looking at us very confused. Um, but then when Rey Mysterio comes out, everybody loves Rey Mysterio. Yeah, uh, so especially in Mexico at the biggest show of the year. Um, so 20,000 people staring at you, not knowing who you are, um, is kind of an interesting feeling. Um, 
But then when you wrestle Ray Mysterio and uh, the me and the rest of the Lucha guys did what we did, they definitely knew who were the good guys, who were the bad guys, and who they don't like. And hey, this guy and the Moth guy is kind of weird. <laughs> so uh, it was very fun. By the end of the time the match was over, I had 20,000 people flipping me off and throwing beer on me. Um, and honestly, that was very, very fun. It's a very different environment from the 450 people that are in the temple. Um, they're just so much closer and more intimate. Where 20,000 people, you have to be pretty big. But the sound is just so different. It amazed me how the sounds were so different. And 20,000 people, that's probably the most I've wrestled in front of. Yeah, absolutely. That's a lot of people even be in front of, period. So I imagine that was a little nerve-wracking for you. I'm, the, I'm always nervous before every single match anyway, whether it's 10 people or 20,000. Um, I think when you stop getting nervous, that's when you should quit. Yeah, no, I agree with that, definitely. So then, uh, you know, like like we've been talking about, you know, you wrestle in Lucha Underground, which, like I said again, I will mention again because I think it's so awesome. <laughs> it's, it's probably the best promotion, hands down. But uh, you were there, you know, for all this stuff that's been happening in Lucha Underground, and something pretty awesome just happened recently. You know, Sexy Star won the title. Um, you know, I don't know if you have any kind of, you know, behind the scene thing that you can tell us how that was, how everyone was, and how the crowd was. I don't know. You know, how, how did you think that was? How did you feel about that? Well, I have a, uh, more of a personal relationship with Sexy because I did a lot with her last season. Um, and uh, good for her. It, it was great. I love, well, one of the many things I love about Blue China Ground is that we all are there supporting each other. Um, the, the weather, oh, I'm... Like, we're there, we watch each other's matches, we give each other critiques, we help each other. So when she came back, she was very emotional. Um, she got a, a big clap from the entire locker room. Um, it was a good moment on TV and after TV. Uh, so everyone was very supportive, giving her hugs, and uh, it was a good moment just overall. It was a good day that day. Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah, but I have a little bit. I kidnapped her, so I have a little bit more of a personal experience with her. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, that's, that's cool, though. You know, like you said, that was it's kind of like a, almost a historical moment because she's the first woman to hold the title, correct? In any promotion that is on uh, on TV, I believe, period, actually. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, so, like, yeah, that's, I that's think a huge deal. <laughs> that's a huge deal. Uh, Lucha Underground is definitely... Uh, Showing woman power. Um, I do says because of the stuff I did with Sexy Star in season two. I definitely want to say I helped in that aspect. Um, but I, Sexy is a definitely a good worker, um, and a Lucha Underground is a place where we're not wrestlers; we're superheroes um, and super villains, and that's what I love about it. So, um, again, with Sexy Stars, it was an amazing moment on TV and after TV. She was emotional. Everybody was emotional. Everyone was very supportive. She's a sweetheart in real life. Um, and uh, it's one thing to get to the dance. It's another thing to stay on top. Yeah, absolutely. So, so you know, you, you told a little story there about, you know, Sexy Star and that whole thing, you know, that's, which is awesome. But is there any other, like, funny stories about Lucha Underground? Because I know every now and then you have one of those times where it's, a little something funny on the side happens, you know. I don't know if you have any you can share with us. Um, so, just I can give you two things here, actually. It's kind of fun. Um, number one, Johnny Mundo. Um, how many times have you seen him with a shirt on? Quite a few, I, I would imagine. Quite a few. <laughs> that makes one of us, because I never see that guy with a shirt on, actually. He, he never, like, he's never on TV, really, with shirts. And yeah. he's never in the locker room with shirts on. I love that guy. He's hilarious. Really? Uh, yeah. Um, he is Johnny Mundo. I love it. Um, one other thing. One thing's fine. We talked about Triple Mania. Um, when you get in the ring, it's so different than anything else. It's not like acting. I've been in films. I've done stuff like that. It's not like acting because you can interact with the crowd right there at that time. And what you do will make them hate you, boo you, sit on their hands, or do nothing. So um, it's very fun. Um, I remember one time in particular, um, they had no idea who we were in Mexico. 
but they know who Rey Mysterio was. Yeah. And we'd beaten up everybody else on his team. And then so it's all three of us circling, and you can watch it on Triple Mania. Uh, we're we're uh, circling Rey Mysterio, just stomping him. <laughs> and then uh, and everyone's booing, okay. But you can tell when you've worked for a while what's going to make a crowd do a certain action. And that's what's fun, I and mean, that's what people don't understand, is we're not going back there and saying, I'm going to do this move, this move, this move, this move, this move, because that doesn't work. We're, we listen to the crowd and what works, what you crowd give us. That's what we're going to try and do. Um, so we're stomping on Rey Mysterio, and then we, we're smiling and looking at him, and then Rey Mysterio says, stop, I don't, okay, I don't know if I can swear. But, uh, no, you can, says, you, can, you can swear if you want to. Go ahead. Dude, he's like, stop me. I'm like, oh, all right, stop me. So there's three of us stomping the crap out of him. He's like, come on, kick me, you pussies. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wow, all right. So we just start laying the boots to him even harder. Now there's three people kicking him when he's already on the ground. There's three people kicking me, and Rey Mysterio is calling us names while we're kicking him. <laughs> uh, so there's three people kicking him, and he's calling us names. Kick me harder, da da da. And, uh, but it worked because the crowd went from I hate you to I want to kill you, and it got so much louder just by a little bit more intensity. And the, being in a ring with someone like Rey Mysterio, who, who's had so much time in front of that many people, has had so much time in the ring, um, it's great to see his knowledge of if I, they stop me harder, they'll react more. But that was fun. Plus... It was my first time in Mexico, my first time in front of 20,000 people. I thought it was hilarious to be called uh, a pansy, um, in, in better words, no way what they call me. Um, I thought it was hilarious to have Ray Mysterio call us pansies while we're stomping the crap out of them, three different guys that aren't very small. Yeah. So uh, that was definitely fun to have Ray Mysterio kick me, you pansies. Uh, but, uh, that was that's actually um, really funny. <laughs> I, I could actually, you know, I, obviously I've never met him, but I could actually kind of see that. I can kind of hear him saying something like that, just you know, <laughs> in the spur of the moment. <laughs> and threw us all off. I'm like, I, he really just caught No, we're going to stop. No, ask, no, we're going to kick this hell out of you. <laughs> so that's what we did. And it worked. So he just knows what's going to make a crowd do what, and uh, he knows it to perfection. Another fun thing about Lucha Underground, it's the same place that they shot the Saw movie. So oh, really? that's always fun. Yeah, Johnny Mundo, uh, he, he's quick. A lot of us guys just wait till we get to the, show, to the hotel after the shows before we shower and just have some privacy. But there's showers at the arena, at the temple there, and they shot this original song movie there. But there's no hot water. So um, know that every single time you see Johnny Mundo wrestle, he goes in the saw shower and showers in really, really cold, <laughs> really cold water. So, uh, yeah, that's a little unknown tidbit. It's a saw, same place they filmed saw it, and uh, that set is, uh, is actually the one you see, everybody in the bathroom that You see uh, Vinny Massaro using the bathroom all the time, and then random guys having meetings in the bathroom. That bathroom is very special to each other guy. Yeah, definitely. That's actually really cool. I did not know that. Yeah, yeah it's a little fun. Good old Hollywood. <laughs> Good old Hollywood. Well, uh, you know, before before we wrap up here, because uh, we're getting a little, we're, I think we're at 21 minutes or so, before we wrap up, uh, something that a lot of wrestlers have been doing now, uh, they have like a list. A list of people that they would like to wrestle in the future. So my question to you would be, what is your list? Honestly, I'm very easy to go because I think everybody brings something different to the table. Um, Kill Shot was a fun guy to wrestle. Um, that was an amazing thing. I, I'll always love wrestling him. Um, honestly, I just love wrestling people that I haven't wrestled before. Um, however, one guy that pops in my mind that's not an old retired guy or anything like that is uh, Son of Havoc. Yeah, okay. Um, Son of Havoc and uh, Matunza. Both of them are good friends of mine, and I've yet to be able to step in the ring and really get to do much with them. Um, and Son of Havoc was on WWE Tough Enough with me five years ago. Okay. Um, and I still didn't really get to get in the ring with them. 
so, and he's been to UCW Zero here in Utah to wrestle, but that's when my leg was still broken, so he wrestled my friend. Um, we just crossed paths so many times, and we've never been able to get in the ring together. And I just think it'll be fun with my kind of brawl crazy style versus his finesse um, and his just ingenuity uh, wrestling. Son of Havoc is somebody that I'd really like to get my hands on. Um, he's my dude. So I'm just surprised I haven't actually wrestled him, and I've known him for so many years. Yeah, absolutely. Actually, that sounds like a really great match. I, I mean, if I was, if I did the booking for Lucha Underground, I'd make that happen. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be fun. And now a lot of people after Aztec Warfare yesterday are talking about me and Matanza. So we'll see if that happens here. Uh, he's a big man. So uh, I was able to go toe to toe with him last night, and uh, it got to be a little bit crazy to stare that man in the face and not piss yourself. Yeah, so. no, I, I would, I can imagine that too. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun, yeah. There's a big list of people that I, I, I want to get on. There's not names on particular. It's just I want to be in the ring with every single person that I can that I haven't gotten in the ring with. Everybody I believe, um, even starting out to the major vets, has something different that they bring. So I always learn. I just got in the ring with Paul London. Uh, you trying to go and do the tour. Uh, last couple of weeks, and uh, I hope that continues because that was amazing. And I know a lot of people outside of Los Angeles would love to see Lucha Underground live. Yeah. Um, so I would also love to get in the p- ring with Paul London again. Uh, so he's going to have some fun stuff with that Rabbit Tribe coming up. Absolutely. Well, I'm excited for that. <laughs> <laughs> well, then before, uh, my last question for you. Uh, I know I asked what your list of people you want to wrestle in the future, but what can people – what? What, what can people expect out of you in 2017? What are your goals for 2017? What are you gonna What are you gonna drive home this coming year? Uh, the Moth Tribe is gonna take over the temple. Seriously, just the Moth Tribe. When I when Marty the Moth started out, he was the comedic relief. Yeah. Um, and then you got a little bit darker into his psyche, and a little bit darker, and a little bit darker. Now you add a badass like Mariposa in there. We're gonna do some damage. And uh, the more and more this world goes in a little bit more mystical and fun, we're going to have some fun next year. I'm looking for gold. Yeah, absolutely. So Aztec pride, Aztecs love gold. So I'm bringing that home to the Moth Tribe and making a sweet little thing above my bed with the belt. (laughs) Well, awesome. You know, I'm pumped to see it then. So then let me ask you this. Where can people follow you on your social media to follow the carnage when it does ensue? <laughs> the carnage. Follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. It's the same thing in every single uh, media that I have. Martin Casaus. Uh, you can look up Martin Moth, and my name will pop up anyway. C-A-S-A-U-S is my last name. Um, but I'm on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and Please write me a message. Let me know how you feel about Lucha or me. I love to banter with you or uh, just write you back because I always say without fans, it's just two dudes rolling around in spandex. So i got to be grateful for the fans and especially the fans there at Lucha Underground who are just the craziest fans ever, and I love it. Absolutely, man. Well, hey, thank you so much for being on the show. We greatly appreciate having you come on here and just – you know, really just shoot the shit and just get this, you know, interview going. I, I love it, you know. But thank you so much for being on here. We re- I really appreciate it. Dave really appreciates it, man. It's an honor for being on. Thank you very much for having me, and I hope you guys have a good day, all right? Absolutely. And hopefully maybe later down the road we can get you back on here, catch up with you, and see what the Moth Tribe has done, the carnage that they have committed. <laughs> <laughs> Keep watching Lucha, there's going to be plenty of it. Absolutely. Thank you, man. Check out Geek Stew for all your geek and wrestling news and podcasts. Visit geek stew.com. Hi, everyone. This is Crazy Fangirl. Now, I know everyone is probably just like totally still talking about Survivor Series and everything that happened there. And it was awesome. Don't get me wrong. Totes love Survivor Series, and I am a absolute totally crazy fangirl for the traditional Survivor Series matches but let's get real the biggest news out of the WWE in the past seven days was actually that Total Bellas has been renewed for the second season and 
I don't know if you watched Total Bellas, because, like, I originally was all with the whole Total Divas thing, like, I don't want to watch that, blah, and then, like, I was so lucky, and I came down with the flu, and I was, and I woke up one middle of the night, and Total Divas was on the e-network, and I couldn't find the remote, and I was just too tired and too sick to get up and look for it, and I laid there and watched a marathon and totally became hooked, because it's like, it not only gives you, like, insight into the girls, but also, like, the guys, you know, so, you know, you got to know the Usos, and you got to know Daniel Bryan, and you got to see John Cena when he's not being, like, you know, John Cena, so, Total Bellas, though, was really cool, and, you know, and it had a lot of emotion with Daniel Bryan retiring, and all of that stuff, and then you got to see, like, the John Cena, kind of a little crazy, you know, that whole, you're going to get dressed up, and we're going to have breakfast tea, and blah, 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 so anyway, loved it, season two, though, going to be even more awesome, because John and Nikki, who are used to, like, this amazing life of luxury, they're moving in with Brie and Daniel Bryan to help her through her pregnancy, now, I don't know if y'all remember, but Daniel Bryan wanted to, like, have everybody poop in the garden. Can you imagine John Cena being told that he's got to poop in the garden? And, like, John Cena's bicep. It's as big as Bree and Daniel's entire house. So, I don't know. I don't know. But I can't wait to see how this plays out. So, until next time, this is Crazy Fangirl. Doodles. Gather around for life lessons from professional wrestling's own, Mance Warner. It's Warner Wisdom. All right, people, here we go, baby. I'm all hyped up. I'm ready to rock and roll. Let's get this podcast dilly on the, on the road, I suppose, right here now. Okay, okay. This is your favorite wrestler of mine, Mance Warner, the king of big dog style, the medium-sized man beast, lariats and light beer, I got a whole bunch of other nicknames, but Jesus, I can't remember all of them, man. I, I get beat up once in a while. Now, here we go. This week, going to be a little different. We got Thanksgiving coming up around the corner. So, essentially, what I'm going to do, see, essentially, y'all probably didn't know I didn't know big words like that. Essentially, what we're going to do this week, besides me giving y'all some wisdom out here. I'm going to tell y'all what I'm thankful for in my life. In this beautiful land of pro wrestling that I navigate through every week. Navigate, that's another one, huh? I'm just blowing your mind this week, huh, people? You dummies. Nah. First of all, Thanksgiving, usually a time I come rolling in. Six beers deep, light beers, and people get lippy with me. I start throwing lariats, baby. I ain't afraid or opposed to taking a turkey and throwing it out the front door, out into the, out into the grass out there. It's just what I do, man. I'm a bad guy through and through. Nah, I'm sure with Thanksgiving coming up, we're gonna see people saying, "I'm thankful for my family." I'm thankful. That I'm a good guy. And you people cheer for me. And say that you like me. All that dumb business. People are weak, man. Y'all a bunch of babies. A bunch of big dumb babies out there. Now let me get on with this. I got four shows coming up this week. I'm a busy guy. I got to get out there on the road. Make them towns. Beat people up. Make kids cry out there because I'm beating up their favorite wrestler. Why are you doing that, man? It's your mean. You're a bad guy. I hate you. I hate you. Stupid kids. Jesus Christ Almighty. Nah. Like I was saying, I got me a list here of things that I'm thankful for for this Thanksgiving. So here we go, people. Number one, 
Numero uno. See, I know that's Spanish because I was back in Mexico back in the day. Who is daddy? George Guerrera. Down in Puerto Rico, too. Charlie. If anyone sees them boys, tell them old Mances, think about them. Now, here on to the list. Here we go, people. Number one, old Manser, big doggy himself. That's another nickname I forgot to say earlier, people. Bring it full circle right here for you dummies. Number one, I'm thankful for light beer, baby. It's crisp, it's cool. If y'all got a light beer out there, send it my way, send me samples. I'll put it on the Instagram, on the Twitter, put it on the internet for you. I'll put over your light beer. You just send it to me. I'll put it on Give me free beer. I'll put it on the internet. Tell everybody how good it is. So number one for old Mancer with light beer. Now these are not in order of most important to least important. These are just a list of things that I set down while I was getting drunk. And I wrote down for all y'all. Number one light beer. Number two. My beautiful lariat that I throw at you people every week, man. Lariats. I'm thankful for a beautiful lariat that old Mass Warner throws at you dumbass every single week. So number one and number two, light beers and lariats, people. Number three, microphones. Because every show I go to, I get to take the microphone and say whatever I want to say about the town The people, the dumb kids, the toothless, ugly old people, the hill jacks in the crowd that want to threaten me. And I tell them, hey, man, show's over in about an hour. You can meet me in the parking lot. I don't see them in the parking lot. They got a lot to say out the ring. So number three, microphones. Baby, I go out there and say whatever I want to say to these people. I'm probably the only people in these, the only person in these dumb people's life that tells them the truth, man. Them dumb fools, them old hill jacks in the crowd that will run their mouth to me. Probably go home and their ugly wife tells them, oh, you're the best, baby. I love you so much. And she cheating on him. And he goes to his stupid job and his boss goes, oh, I don't know what I'd do without you. When the boss knows, and when this piece of shit kill over, he'd just get another dummy. See, I ain't like y'all people. You people make me sick, man. A bunch of zombies out there doing the same crap every day. Y'all suck. You're worthless. I'm, I'm going on a tangent here. Back to my list. So number one, light beer. Number two, larynx. Number three, a microphone. So I move on to number four here. Number four. Goodies. Y'all know me, you know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about goodies here. Goodies that go in my fanny pack. Number five. Moving on here. Number five is simple, man. It's the last one on the list. It's me, baby. I'm thankful for Mance Warner. The best thing going in pro wrestling, man. I call it right down the middle. I show up to towns. I beat people up. I get paid money. I hate all you people. I'll rally you up. I'll beat you up. That's just what I do, man. Light beer, lariats, microphones, and me. That's it. That's what I'm thankful for, people. This has been another edition of Warner's Wisdom for all you dummies out there. And tune in. I'll see y'all next time. And welcome back to the Dave Dynasty Show. Why do you always sing that? Uh, why not? I think the answer is obvious.
Well, I think the answer is not obvious, and we should always sing because it brings joy to the people who listen to this podcast because they live very sad lives. Very and sad. Your singing is going to bring joy to them. If nothing, if my singing can't do it, nothing will, because I know how deeply, deeply deprived these people are of real entertainment. Hmm. Okay. Yep. So, do we have questions? Because this is getting into some weird water here. We do have questions. You yeah, want some questions? Give me a question. Yeah. All let's right. Just, let's move along here. I don't <laughs> this is odd. All right. So, first question: Iron Man match Rick Rude and Ricky Steamboat took place at Beach Blast 1992. Uh, and this guy says, "I hold this up as one of the best matches ever." Question is: Do you agree or disagree with me, and why? Never seen this match, but I imagine it was good. Um, it was good. One of the best. I don't know. I would probably, I would probably, mm, I'd probably put it in my top 20. Yeah. I would guess. I don't know. I am very biased to Ricky Steamboat matches. I love Ricky Steamboat. And the great thing about this match is Ricky Steamboat, to me, is one of the all-time great baby faces. He's just a natural baby. And Rick Rude is one of the greatest heels of all time. He's just such a natural heel. And they both can work their asses off. Yeah. So, um... Yeah, I would define it as one of the greatest. Like I said, it's probably top 20 for me. I, I like to watch it. I haven't seen it in forever. Hadn't really thought about it, but uh, yeah, I'd still we'll rewatch it now. But uh, um, yes, I would say it was a spectacular match. I very much enjoyed it. Um, yeah. <laughs> you're, you're like. I, I, I love Steamboat and Rude both. Yeah. So you can't go wrong. Fair so. enough. Fair enough. Yeah. Ready, for, ready for the next question? Yeah, yeah. Worst Vince Russo booking a decision. There's a, there's a lot of those. Yeah, we could do a whole podcast just discussing some of these. Vince Russo. I mean, I don't even know. I think I have to go with the obvious one, and that is the fact that it was his decision to put the WCW world title on David Arquette. Oh, my God. Yeah, I remember that. When the Rated Rumble came out and stuff, the movie. Yeah, nobody wanted it to happen, not even Arquette. He thought it was a bad idea, but he went along with it, and um, yeah. He donated like the money to the families of Owen Hart and Brian Pillman, I think. Yeah. Any money he made. But the word is that it was like a Tony Schiavone was actually the one that came up with the idea, but he did it as a joke because they were talking about how much Arquette was around. They were all they were doing was promoting a lot of Ready to Rumble, and he joked, "Well, you might as well just put the title on Arquette as much as he's around, or something like that." And for some reason Russo liked it. Well, Vince Russo, it wasn't he also the guy that basically. Uh, Broke kayfabe on purpose to prove yeah, to the yeah, audiences. Yeah, he, he did all kinds of. He, he has so many bad ideas. Like, like we don't already know the wrestling. He actually scene, in TNA know. actually had a, uh, I don't know what you call it, um, a reverse battle royal, where it started with two men in the ring and like eighteen on the outside, and they had to fight to get into the ring, and then when all twenty were in the ring, they had then just a normal battle royal. Um. What? How would? Um, now, tell me what, what's difficult about fighting to get the ring. Wouldn't you just, like, bell rings and literally wouldn't you just have 18 guys slide into the ring all at once? Yeah, I was like, you might be able to Why stop would they one fight? or two. Why would you be fighting to keep somebody else out when you could just go in? I don't, I don't know. He loved gimmick matches. He loved stuff on poles. He loved boxes that you opened up with weird shit in it. Yeah, what, what he, are those? What are those matches where like they tie like weapons to like the tops of poles? He just like all tie, kinds tie. of weird stuff. Was that like the tie pay death match? He's he's the guy that turned Bill Goldberg heel for no reason, just out of the blue, no build up, just turned him heel, and then they had to kind of drop it and backtrack. He was the guy that um, recreated the Montreal screw job, um, with the opposite way with Brett winning in WCW. It was just weird stuff. <laughs> it was weird. I mean, he, uh, I mean, when he was in TNA, he pretty much single-handedly destroyed the knockout division by making a mockery of him. He had a beef with Jim Ross, so he created a character named Oklahoma that made fun of him and his <laughs> Bell's palsy. I mean, he was. Jesus. I, I don't like Vince Russo. I don't like, I mean, yeah, he did o some, he did some okay stuff in the Attitude Era and pre-Attitude Era and, WWE when he was supervised. Yeah. I think's the key. When he got too much power, man, he he fucking didn't like just normal matches. He there had to be some stupid stipulation on everything, so had to put the put the reins on the horse there, didn't the it sounds like it at least. 
All right, yeah, no <laughs> Vince Russo. We will not talk about Vince Russo much on this podcast for a reason. It looks like I think I, I think again, maybe we'll just have one episode where we're just totally drunk <laughs> and we'll talk about Goldberg Lesnar and we'll talk about Vince Russo. We'll talk about Alberto Del Rio. I, I like Alberto Del Rio though. It yeah, it's like a, we had to, I like all we had to talk about this weird stuff. I like Alberto Del Rio. Right, go give us the next question. Next question, last question actually. Can Kevin Owens versus Brock Lesnar happen? Can it? Of course it could happen. They're both in WWE. It uh, can happen. Yeah. Will it happen? Probably not. Yeah. You think you think so? Someday. I, I don't know. It'll it'll be contingent on whether Lesnar what he's around, what he's around, how long he's around. I think Owens will at some point be high enough status to to have the match. It'll be a question on how much Lesnar's around at that time. Yeah, I mean, at some point, who else? You I mean you got to? There's got to be if Lesnar's around, even part time, you got to have somebody to give to him. Who's it going to be? Well, here's my thing, because um, they have him going up against uh, Lesnar and Goldberg, and they had Lesnar and Undertaker, and they had Lesnar and what is Orton. Yeah, Orton. I mean, and uh, the Orton match was dumb, by the way. Yeah, but I mean, why not Owens? I don't no know. No one does a star. I, I, yeah, but my thing is, is that Brock Lesnar almost... I almost think that it'd be a waste of Owens' time, personally. Or it could be a way to completely build Owens. I mean, if you put him over in the match, but I don't know. I feel like Vince McMahon's got a hard-on for Brock Lesnar and would probably it's put because him... because Brock Lesnar's money. Well, yeah. And Brock, Brock Lesnar is one of those guys that even though it's pro wrestling, you know he's a legit badass. Well, yeah, I wouldn't... And you believe him, and he's got name value, and... That's why, and, it, and it's, but yeah, I mean, but it, he didn't even have to be, Owens didn't have to beat him to help him. It could still yeah. elevate him just to, by his showing. I mean, like, I wouldn't want to, if, like, if I saw Brock Lesnar, like, walking down an alley, like, I would avoid said alley. I would take an entire different route around said alley. Yes. Cause I wouldn't. I'd be, like, running up West for a selfie. And then he'd clothesline you and pile drive Whatever. you into the pavement. With, like, when have you ever seen Brock Lesnar do a pile driver? I'm pretty sure. I'm, didn't he do a power driver? No. I'm sure he has before. Oh, he, he used to do a shooting star press. But that was weird. Can you imagine seeing him do one now? I Did, wonder if he could still pull that off. Probably not. Didn't he break a ring doing that one time? I don't know. I thought I it thought was pretty I, spectacular to see him do it. He wouldn't. No, he was still big, but not like you know. I, I remember. I remember very very vividly. I don't know why. But I remember vividly seeing him doing a shooting star press. I want to say it was on the Big Show, and it just collapsed like a corner of the ring. Big Show collapsed the corner one time, trying to do like a Vader bomb type thing. What's was it? up on the second rope, bouncing like he was going to do a backsplash thing. <laughs> rope broke and he fell. No shit. Yeah. No. Look it up. It's pretty funny. Well, I'm not talking about like ropes, ropes broken. I'm talking about like Maybe actual ring have, breaking. I just it, it just perplexes me to think. Can you imagine Lesnar doing one? That'd be oh, it's funny. I think he could probably still do. It. He's still in pretty good shape. Oh, he could probably do it. He won't do it. Why would he do it? It's not believable for him, but I don't think he would. Why he, he's not going to waste his time doing that? I think it'd be cool. Yeah, well, it ain't going to happen. Have him do it against or uh, what's his name? No, no, no. Goldberg. He doesn't need no. Well, somebody's got to be different than the same person. They're the same wrestler, basically. Well, okay. I think so. They're just going to be the hell out of each other. We saw how that worked. How that worked out real well with the Randy Orton match. Tables not breaking, and the match, <laughs> the match ending with Randy Orton just spewing blood everywhere. Oh, well, it is what it is. Sorry, I, I have a grudge against whoever booked that match. That was dumb as hell. Perhaps. So is that all the questions we have? That is all the questions we have. All right, because we are spiraling again, talking about Goldberg Lesnar. It, I, I mean, we were talking about Brock Lesnar, so I mean, obviously right. that's gonna. Lead. We're not. We're not talking about them anymore, though. No, like, no, no. Well, have you heard like the whole no, 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 no. the whole like social no. mind theory? No. That like it's no wait 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 no. <laughs> Hear me out. This is not that kind of podcast. No, like it's like a social mind theory that says whenever you're having a conversation with somebody, you always end up on the topic of something. Well, the the theory is is that when you talk to somebody, you always it always can lead to one person. You know who that person is? Who? Adolf Hitler. What? No, seriously, I'm, I'm dead serious. They did a social experiment. Well, what's that got to do with what we're talking about? Are I'm you saying, saying Brock Lesnar is Adolf Hitler? Yeah, Brock Lesnar is like our like uh, one thing we always talk about. Somehow gets there, you know. But apparently, if you talk long enough with somebody, I think it's like after so many, so long, like after like an hour, you always end up reaching that point where you start talking about like Hitler. You know who needs to be our guy from now on that we always? Who's that? Pork Chop Cash. Who is that? One of the best jobbers of the 80s. Look him up. Pork Chop Cash. 
you can go you can do no wrong with that name pork chop cash next up on the podcast pork chop cash. i would you know what i would literally I, I would feel like i peaked if i get to interview pork chop cash I don't even know if he's still alive. I'm gonna have to look this up. See yeah, if I can track him down. Look it up, man. He, hey, I would do an interview. I don't know. He's pretty. Yeah, man. I don't know. What to look him up? I would love to interview some of those jobbers from the '80s. Oh yeah, that'd uh-huh. be great. I want to interview the I'm jobber that uh, the teacher that got like uh, put in the master lock. Remember Chris Masters? Yeah. Remember the teacher that was like the A or whatever? You know what I mean? I wonder. What? He he had like an A on his like uh, singlet. I don't know who you're talking about. Yeah, he was like a teacher, quote unquote teacher. Matt Stryker? I don't know. Maybe. You mean the, the guy that calls Lucha Underground? No, 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 no. He was in the WWE, and I remember, I don't remember, Matt again, was, I believe. So, something weird. I remember Chris Masters did the Master Lock, and he did like the Master Lock Challenge, where it's like, oh, if yeah, you can yeah. break out of the Master but Lock. But he was a WWE wrestler? No, 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 no. He was like a jobber. But he had a, well, how do you know he was a teacher? Because they had him come back like once, I think. Uh, Okay. And I don't remember why they did it either. I think it was just one of those things, you know. I'm so confused. I don't. I don't know if I recall all this. I'm trying to Google it. Let's see what we can. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, I don't know. Uh, Chris Masters was on Big Time Rush. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> all right. Yeah, I don't know. We'll have to research that more. But that was weird. But that was another jobber because he just got slung around. Because you know how the ma- he had the master lock, which was just a full yeah, analysis, yeah, yeah. basically. That is our mission. You know, we try to promote younger guys on the show, you know, and we interview younger guys every now and then. Let's sprinkle. Let's sprinkle in some really old guy. Some old yeah. some old uh jobber from job the eighties. 80s. 80s. What do you you're staring there's at? Some, my there's something on your neck. It's you like, said that before. I think it's just a piece of string. Sorry, but it looked like a spider. You're like visualizing spiders every I think I am. I think I'm going insane. I think I'm paranoid. I thought it was a spider and I was like, Oh, I hate spiders. I hate spiders. Oh my gosh! Sorry, this is spiraling again. Yeah, let's call it. Let's call it. <laughs> this one is dead. I'm throwing the throwing the, <laughs> throwing the towel in the ring. <laughs> we're I don't, we're talking about weird master lock challenge get, and get, imaginary spiders. Give, give it up, Rock. We Th- are done. Let me throw the towel in, Rock. <laughs> a rocky river, I like that. Yes, yes. All right, let's call it a week. We're going on vacation. Yeah, it's time for I'm vacation. Done. Yeah, I'm I, I'm ready for vacation. As we're recording this, I have two days of work left, and I get to go on vacation. Yeah, we will do some videos on vacation. I've put it up on YouTube or something, especially of all the lucha libre masks that I'm going to buy. And yes, we're going to Mexico. Vendors. So we will we'll do some videos. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, and, I'm down for and that. We'll put them up on YouTube or on Facebook or whatever else. So on the tube of you. Yeah. So. All right, so that is it for this week's edition of the Dave Dynasty Show. I apologize for going down the rabbit hole and the utter chaos that I has ensued. That's why I'm here. The uh, producer is here to, to spur on conversation. I believe you're here to keep things in order, but, man, you do the opposite. So some Sometimes you have to have chaos. Not really. The universe is not complete without chaos. Chaos theory, look it up. Oh, are we going to Jurassic Park now? Is that, is that Jurassic Park or is that actual science? The the guy at Jurassic Park, where he always talked about chaos theory. Oh well, yeah, like oh, but that's like he's saying like oh, if there's something bad can happen, it's gonna happen. Yeah, well, it has happened. Something bad has happened. <laughs> <laughs> you have completely shite on another episode. <laughs> we're done. Just don't the, even. We're done. That's it. This is why they come to listen to you. We're done. I am Dave Dynasty, and I am Mike Isaacs. We'll see you next week.